Hello. Oh, gotta put my volume down. How are you? Hello. <clears throat> Just waiting for uh get to get on to Facebook. Oh. It's cold. I was warming up, but now I'm cold again. I don't know. Mother Nature has no clue what the heck she's doing lately. It's not pretty. I don't like being cold. I want my money back. I moved to Florida because it was warm. All right. I'm going to wait a few minutes for people to show up. Today we're doing two sections because we got to get this ball rolling so that um, we can start the Barn Star Sampler Quilt next month. So we're going to do section three. And... Section four. Okay, and I'll show you close up. I'm gonna do section two. Um wait a minute. Section three and section four today. Okay. Let me know if you show up. If not, I'm just going to keep on going. Trucking, trucking, trucking. In a few minutes, I'll keep trucking. I get myself into a lot of trouble. And as most of you know, I repainted and I'm almost done remodeling my kitchen. And after this, I'm going to my bathroom my master bath and then I'm going to do the floors tile floors over in there because it's a smaller area than my kitchen so I want to try it out in there first but now that my kitchen is just about done with the exception of the floor and some finished work you know putting new um receptacle covers on and putting the hardware on the rest of the cabinets and drawers I'm looking at, because it's one big open area. So my my house is an open floor plan. So from the kitchen, you see the dining room, you see the living room, you can see down the hallway to the, to the bedrooms and guest room and all that. My dining room furniture is old. It's very old. And it's kind of got an orange, the wood has got an orange hue to it. So the more that I look at it, the more... I'm thinking I need to refinish it, which has opened up a huge rabbit hole of refinishing furniture, painting, decoupage, and all this happy stuff. So, yeah, that's what I've been looking at for the last week. I always get myself in trouble. I'll be the first one to tell you there's never enough time in the day to do everything I want to do. But that doesn't stop me from coming up with more projects, from quilting and everything else. Um, I've been like that my entire life. I can't help it. It's just what it is. Okay. Let's see. We are basically doing this section and this section today. These two. We've already done this whole section here, and that's it, I think. Maybe we've done this one, too. I don't know. I'm losing track of what we've done and what we haven't done. My brain is just, between the holidays and being sick, I'm all behind and out of whack. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I guess I'll start. I'm a little bit early, so if you come in, just say hey. But I got a lot to get done today, and I still have a lot more to do after the video. So, let's get going. 
All right, section three. It's hard to tell because everything is backwards, but my section three is under here. Just like I told you before, okay? We're doing two halves. They're two mirrored halves. So we want them to be opposites. The easiest way to do that is to do one section as it says in the book, which is what I did here, my left section, that I laid it down on my board face up. And then I put my right section pieces on matching them right side to right side. This is the easiest way that I know to keep everything straight and make sure you're doing a right and a left, not two lefts or two rights. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's really easy to get confused, okay? But if you do this, you're less likely to get confused. So first thing I'm going to do is, and by the way, if you look in here, it's going to, see this, how do I show you? You okay, see this dark solid line? That's breaking these up into sections so you know what to put together, okay? So this is what I'm going to do first, which is right here, these two. Okay, then I'll do this section and then I will put these two to this section, these all together. And you're just going to do it one step at a time. But if you follow this idea and they've got arrows, so it's going to show you exactly what you're putting together where. All right. So it's not it's not rocket science. And it's easy. You just got to take it one step at a time. I mean, this quilt in general, when you look at it, um, and for those of you who are joining us late and may not know what we're doing, just to give you an idea, okay, we're doing two halves. Actually, we're doing, yeah, two full halves. So this is one side. And then we're doing another side on the opposite side. So they're mirrored to one big giant quilt. But if you take it just one step at a time, then you don't have any problems. Okay. all That's all quilting is. Just one block at a time, one step at a time, and you'll get there. Just don't go ahead of yourself. Don't get overwhelmed. And... You'll be fine. This this quilt was fairly simple to put together. Um, it had a few issues, like the circles and the curves. But other than that, the rest of it is just straight piecing. It's really not difficult. It's half square triangles, log cabins, blocks and blocks, just easy. Okay, up. So let's get going. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two half square triangles together and then sew it to this one. Okay. And just go slow and make sure you know when you pick it up, don't lose track of where you're supposed to sew it. Been there, done that. Learn from my mistake. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. Okay. I'm just going to iron. Oh, I forgot to heat up my iron. Uh -oh. Hopefully it heats up fast. You know, I can't remember everything, especially lately. My brain is just not... Mm, where it should be between the holidays, taking a week off there, taking a week off because I got sick for the first time in five years and everything else. I'm just a little bit foggy and I'm still sick a little bit. I mean, I'm not coughing nearly as much as I was, but I still have coughing spit, spurts and um, 
I just finished my antibiotics for my ear infection last night, I want to say, but I still can't hear anything out of this ear, which is very annoying. I don't like not being able to hear. All right. Here you go. So there, I sewed those two together. Now I'm going to sew these two pieces together. Oops. So, what is everybody working on? I know I have a lot coming up in the next uh, month or so. We're worked, working on a lot of different things, both in-store and online. It's going to be crazy busy. I would love to know what you guys are working on. I'd love seeing what you guys are working on. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. There we go. See? Just gonna lay it down. That one's done. Now we can sew this one to this one. And I don't think I need to show you me sewing all the time. Unless it's something where I'm lining it up. Because this is just straight sewing. Oh, come on. My machine just decides it doesn't want to go. If I didn't have crafts to do, I think I'd be a very upset girl. I've been doing crafts for so long. And I don't know what I would do if I didn't have crafts to do. It would not be pretty. I'm always coming up with something. But I'm hoping I have a little bit of downtime and can get this stuff up to, up, you know, where it needs to be that I can finally finish unpacking my studio and get it organized because right now it's driving me crazy. I don't like not being able to find things, you know. I don't like it's it's not very conducive to being creative at all. And I've been toying with the idea that I actually might need to hire a professional if I don't have the time to get it done. Because the way it's going right now, it's not pretty. Okay, doke. Here is what I did here. Okay, so now I'm going to take these two and sew them together and then sew these two to this piece. This is super, super easy. The only thing that I will tell you and I want you whoops, to watch out for is trying to keep your seams nice and neat. This is something, it's a lesson that you never stop learning. Okay, as a beginner, if you want to progress in your quilting, you want to try and keep your seams as neat as possible. So what does that mean? It means I've ironed these seams down to a certain side. And I want to make sure when I'm sewing, they stay where I want them to, where I originally ironed them to. Because it'll help with lining my piece my seams up and when i get to a point at the end where i want to actually quilt this if i don't have seams that are half and half like this it'll be easier for me to actually quilt it because they won't get my needle when it's coming from this side won't get stuck or the foot won't hit something it makes the quilting process much, much easier. All right. So who is ready for the barn star sampler quilt? I got to start working on that one too. I got too much to do. 
I'm also working on in the shop, the All Florida Shop Hop quilt that I'm giving free patterns away. And I'm just about done with the top. I'll post that when I'm done. And the pattern is half written. So I'm getting there. But as usual, I bit off a whole lot more than I can probably chew. <laughs> All right, here's the one that we just sewed. Now I'm going to sew these two together. And there's not too many places that I had to worry about lining up the seams, but when I get to them, I'll show you. Is it absolutely positively um, necessary for you to line up all your seams? No, but you'll like it better if you do. It'll be more pleasing to the eye and less distracting. If you line up your seams, is it the end of the world? No. But like most quilters, you'll get frustrated if you don't get it lined up. That being said, don't go crazy and un um, tear out your seams five or six or seven times and keep redoing it because that will be create just as much of a problem as a seam being off a little bit. You can um, deteriorate the fabric if you keep on picking, uh, uh, undoing it. So you just got to learn to pick your battles. Here's the one I just did. I'm going to sew this one to it. All right, nobody wants to join me today. That's okay. Talk to myself. I'm okay with that. All right. Okay. We've got this whole section, and now I'm going to sew it to this section. See right here, I got one seam going that way, and I got one seam going the opposite way. That's what you want, because that way I can line these up without too much trouble. Oops. Wrong one. Okay. So with my seams going in opposite directions... I can nest them. So if we pull it down, hopefully you can see that. These two seams will butt right up against each other. And I take one pin. I don't pin a lot, but when I'm trying to line up my seams, I definitely do. In one side of the seam and the other side. I'm going to be sewing from here down. So what does that do? Well, it'll keep my seams together. Don't mind my threads, but it gives me an opportunity to just stop with my needle down right in the seam that I just wanted that I just aligned up and trying to keep it lined up. So I can stop with my needle down in that seam before I actually take out my pin because sometimes just the act of taking the pin out is enough to misalign your seams. It all is moving. Okay. 
Okay. Now I can take my pen out. You never, ever, and I do mean never, so over your kids. That's not a good idea. Okay. Mm. I'm a little off, so. See right here? I'm a little off and I want to fix it. Yes, I'm Brit bad. I'm that type of a quilter. Now, I will try once, possibly twice. After that, mm -mm. it's a little bit difficult when I'm sewing like this because I'm sewing on an angle to keep the camera view good. But all I'm doing is undoing some stitches on either side. I'm going to re-line that up, align it, and put my pin in, and go back over it. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit closer. Oh, beauteous. See, no big deal. I unstitched just a few stitches, but I got it exactly where I wanted it. Now, listen. We are all our worst enemy. There is no such thing as perfect in quilting. There's nothing perfect about quilting. So just learn to pick your battles. Okay? What does that mean? It means if I hadn't showed you the what I was trying to redo, you probably would have never saw it. Okay? Kind of like the 2020 rule. That's how I teach. What does that mean? It means if you can look at it from 20 feet away, riding horseback, going 20 miles an hour, and you don't see anything wrong, there's nothing wrong. It's supposed to be fun. Not frustrating. And I say that to my beginners and just about everybody I teach all the time. If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. Okay, I'm going to put it back down. Oops, I have one seam that flipped on me. I'm going to re-iron it down and make sure it stays where I want it to. Neat seams is really one of the more important things that you need to learn. And you get better at time. Um, it took me a long time to learn that lesson, but again, I've been doing this since I was 12. It's just something that you learn over time and you work at it. The more you work at it, the better off you're going to be. All right. So now we have this entire huge section here done. So now we're going to start on this section. Uh, there are a few couple seams on here that I want to line up. Let me show you this way. <clears throat> okay, they're not real noticeable seams, but the piecing here and the piecing here, we have one seam here and one seam here. Let me see if I can bring it up closer to you. Just from the piecing itself of putting this block, I have one seam right there. 
and one seam right here. And when I put it together with this strip, it'll match up this seam here and this seam here, okay? So again, now here is on this one, this seam is going in the opposite direction that I want it to. So all I'm going to do is re-iron this over so that I can set this seam. And sometimes you have to do that. Unless you pay attention, some patterns, some designers will... Um, some designers will tell you exactly which way to iron your seams throughout. And others will not. So sometimes you're just trying to go the lesser of two evils where you, you if they don't tell you, you're trying to iron, press the seam so that there's less bulk or um, so that you can line up other seams. Just go with it. So what? I ironed another seam going the, the, diff, a different direction. We ironed it. No big deal. All right. Looks good. The nice thing with this one is even if you're off a little bit, it's solidish here, so you're really not going to notice it. It just gives you more opportunity to learn and practice. All right. We're almost done with this one, and then we can go on to the next one. Um, there we go. Now we've got a half square triangle here and another blank piece, filler piece, background piece, I should say. I hope you guys like what I've been doing next. How many of you are actually going to um, work on the Barn Star Sampler with us? I know I sold out of all the patterns, and I know a lot of you, some of you have patterns and you haven't done it yet. I think it's a great pattern for, I like stars, and I think it's a good one for using our stash. So I'm looking forward to that. I've got all of the fabric pulled, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to start cutting that next week. So that one should be fun. If you like stars and you want to learn how to do stars in quilting, this is going to be a good one. Okay. Now we're going to do... So we just did this piece here. We've got this small log cabin and we've got a half square triangle and a filler block. So if I do the half square triangle and filler block, then I can sew this part to the log cabin and sew this together. It's just like a jig, like jingle, like a jigsaw puzzle. It's not difficult. You just got to keep yourself organized like anything else. If you're organized, you can get through this without issue. <laughs> oh. Lots to do. Lots, lots, lots to do. Hmm. 
Almost done. Almost done. Okay. So here's this one that we just sewed together. Now I'm going to take and sew this one together. Just, it's just like playing Jenga. I mean, I think that's the best way to explain it. You just got to fit the box together. It's pretty much common sense. All these little pots, parts to make the whole. <laughs> Anybody out there? Um, do furniture, uh, furniture re refinishing? You know all that new stuff, decoupage and painting and all that stuff. If so, give me a shout out because I might be. The tables may be turned, and I might be coming after you for advice. I've done some small pieces over the years with stenciling and things like that, but I've never done decoupage. I really want to do it. I think it'll be cool. Okay. So we just put this one down. Now we're going to put it together with this one. I think it'll be fun. What else have I said? I've been doing a lot of new things. I've always done plants. Um, when I was a little girl, my mom had a, a little plant stand. Yeah, my family's doing a lot of things. And at one point, the plant stand was in the front of my dad's sign shop. So I've always loved plants, but I've never tried or um, orchids. And I finally, last week, Purchased my first two orchids, so I'm going to try them and see if I don't kill them. <laughs> and a lot of you came out with some really good advice, so we'll see. Hopefully, I won't kill them. Because I really like them. I think they're pretty. I haven't, even though I've been in Florida for 10 years, a little over 10 years now, I haven't figured out landscaping yet. I mean, I used to do a lot of planting up north, but I haven't figured it out here. So I figure I'll do the inside stuff first. We'll see. Okay. We just did this one. Now we're going to sew it to all of this part. Once that's done, then we can sew it to this part. And the only thing left is this large background piece. Um, okay. So I have one seam that I ironed in the wrong direction because I want to line it up. So this seam is going that way and the seam over here is going the same direction. I want to iron this one back over this way so that I can line up my seams. Is it going to be absolutely, mono, you know, completely important and life altering if you don't get the seams aligned? No. I just found that it makes it look better and more pleasing to my eye personally. Um, but you're not going to really see it on this one. And I'll show you why. Hold on. Okay. Actually, I can probably show you down here better. Um, okay. This is what we're, we're sewing. And this is the seam that I want to line up. But see, this looks solid, even though it's separate pieces. If I line this up for me it, it and line this one up, I will feel better. Not 
that if the seam's off, it's really going to make any difference to the eye. It's just me. But like I told you before, if you practice this throughout every quilt you practice, I even teach seams and lining them up and making sure you get neat seams in the very first class. Not that it's an absolute must on the first beginner quilt, but I feel that it's an important lesson for you to learn and just keep on getting more um, accurate and better with your seams so that eventually when you do decide whether you're just free motion quilting on your domestic machine or you are you have a long arm when you get to that point and you have a bunch of messed up seams it, it makes the quilting process much more difficult. If you are not local and you have a long armor currently taking your, um, doing your long arming for you and your quilting, ask them. They'll tell you. Um, they'll explain it to you. This is nothing that, this is not something new to me or something that I'm coming up with. It just makes it, is it impossible to quilt it? No, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to quilt it. So start learning that lesson. Is it going to make a difference on your first quilt? Probably not. Is it going to make a difference on your second quilt? Probably not. But it's something that you should be um you should be Hold on. I just want to make sure I'm ironing this correctly. Yes. Okay. It's something that you should be striving for. Not to be perfect, but to constantly better your skills. Okay? That's all you want to do. You always want to get better. Um, there's always something new to learn because so once you learn that and um, you're going to learn something else after that there's always something to learn in quilting i don't care how long you've been quilting and i've been quilting a long time there's always going to be something else to learn always there's always new techniques coming out or new ways of doing things okay here's what we did now we're gonna Put these two together. All right, let's see what we got for some matching scenes. I got one. And two. And three. Okay. So some of these I'm going to have to iron back the other way. Is it a mistake that I had them ironed a different way? No. I'm just trying to make my life a little bit easier. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, goodness gracious, me oh my. I am loving this quilt. A lot. So many, that's my problem. I have way too many quilts and not enough time to get them done. I have kits that I have put together. More kits than I could sew in a lifetime. But that doesn't stop me from getting more. All right. I'm just going to pin just like I've already done before. And I've showed you a few times already. I don't pin a lot. But when I'm trying to line up seams. Yes. I will pin. Uh 
All right, now I get to show. If there's ever something that you would like to learn, oops, my thread came from, you know, a technique or a type of pattern, design, whatever, let me know. And I will see what I can do about maybe working it into a video or a class. My thread keeps coming undone. That's one of the yucky parts about brother machines. If you cut your thread too short and I forget to pull it a little bit, it will unthread. Oh. Now, once we have one more seam to sew, and then section three is done, and we'll move on to section four. Uh, and then sometime this week, I'll put the video up on YouTube. Pretty, pretty, pretty! Look! And I'm just going to iron it. And um, then we can put our final piece on. Almost. Almost done. Double checking my seams are going the same direction. This has got a lot of seams, this quilt. So, see what I mean? So try to keep them all in the right direction and neat makes life much easier. Oh God. Here we go. We'll put this one down. Now we just got to sew this seam and then it'll look just like this. And then we'll be ready for section four. Please don't hesitate to comment. If you have any questions, you can message me. I'm on pretty regular that I can check them for you and answer them. Oh, tired already. Got a lot to get done today, though. Here we go. There is our section. Oops, I gotta iron that better. Section three is done. Now we're gonna go on to section four. There we go. There we go. Okay. Section three, left and right. Now I have 
section four. Let's see. And they got mixed up a little bit. So just like we did already, I've already done one section and I'm putting, this is the left side. I'm going to do the right. All I'm doing is putting them right sides together so I know what to do. Okay. And this way we'll be guaranteed to have a mirrored left and right. Now, this one does have, because we've got all of these seams coming together. All right, we do have a few opportunities to line up our seams. And that's gonna require me ironing a few seams back. It's not, not that I did it wrong, okay? It's just, this one didn't have the exact, you know, like some patterns tell you where, um, which, which way to iron your seams. This pattern did not. So I basically ironed my seams for bulk and for kind of like Star Wars. I ironed to the dark side as much as possible. So that just means that I get to re-iron my seams once in a while. All right, let's see. I'm gonna iron this one back. Lots of pinning. When you have a log cabin block and a rail, there's a lot more seams on this one that'll match up. And again, it's not the end of the world if you do not line up all your seams, okay? It's not, it, it'll be fine. For me personally, I like when they line up. I think it just makes it look a little bit more pleasing to my eyes. And I'll show you what I mean when I get this one sewed together. I think we can put this one together pretty fast. And then we'll have section five next week. I'm not sure if we're going to get to section five and six. Section five is pretty big. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Sometimes you have to pick up your foot and put it back down so it can go over the pin without getting stuck. Not that I'm sewing over the pin, but so that this part will go underneath the foot. I also pick up my foot often when I'm 
going over seam so it doesn't push the seam in the wrong direction. If it looks like it's starting to move in the wrong direction. Let's see how I did. Not bad. Even if I do say so myself, I'm okay with it. Now, looking at this, and I'll, I'll iron it so you can see what I mean. One of the seams is off a little bit, but the rest of them are fine. So I'm not going to freak out. See this one right here? But this is what I mean by it. It looks better to my eye when things are continuous, okay? If it's off a little bit, it's it's going to be fine. It's not a big deal. For me personally, I like it better when I can... Um, when I can see that continuous line. All right. It's off a little bit on one seam, but not enough for me to fix it or change it. That's the balance that you are striving for. We are our own worst enemy. So you just got to be happy, get to a point where you're happy with your design, but don't obsess over it. Don't make it have you unstitch it five times because then you will start to put holes in your fabric. It'll fray. It won't be good. That's worse than having the seam un unaligned a little bit. All right. So we just did this whole section here. Now we got a lot of little stuff. So I'm going to sew these two together. And this has two seams that I'm going to line up. This is actually a great quilt for learning. It really is. With the exception of the curves and the circles, which may not be, a, be that beginner friendly, the rest of it is, is a great beginner's quilt, believe it or not. It's going to take you a long time. Not, not a beginner's quilt. This would be like your second quilt. But it's a great skill builder for sure. Just going to take it one step at a time. That's it. One step at a time. Oh. I had to cut my hair this week because it was so long. It was getting in my eye. Now it's a little short and it's still getting in my eyes. Such is life. The only old saying, damned if you do and damned if you don't. All right, we're getting this put together. All right, we just put this one together. Now I'm going to work on these two to this one, then these two to this one. So these two halves together, and then so this to this one. It's just, it's not hard if you just do it one step at a time. And I'm going to take these two and so then I chain piece a lot or at least wherever I can. So instead of cutting a thread, um, 
for the two squares that I put together first and then going back and forth, um, I just feed my next set of blocks in. Why? Chain piece, it makes it a little bit faster for me. Two, this is a brother. So as a result, brothers and baby locks have a, I mean, every machine has its own little quirks, okay? But the brothers and the baby locks have a tendency to want to um, suck your beginning two pieces that you put in there into the plate of your show, of your machine. So by chain piecing, meaning I'm going to sew this through and then I'm going to sew this through without cutting my thread, this acts, the first one is kind of a leader in it. So it's a leader and it acts as a um, starting point. And my machine won't suck in this next set into the plate. I know it's confusing, but what am I doing? It's it it's if you have a brother or a baby lock, you get it. But chain piecing, I love chain piecing. It speeds up the process. Instead of stopping, ironing, go back to the next one, stopping, ironing. If you have a lot of like half square triangles or small pieces that you're putting together, you can just put them through, keep going. All right, let's see, that's that. Now, so we just did this one and this one. I'm gonna take these two and sew them together. And then I'm going to take my next two. So let me show you. Um, I just took these two. So now I'm going to take these two that I sewed and put them through again without even cutting my threads from the first few pieces. Sorry if I got you a little dizzy. So, you see, I didn't stop, and I just have this one little thing of thread to cut. Now I can iron these and put them back on our sample. Um, let's see. I think I went a little bit too far on this one. Um, I cut off my points, which is very frustrating for me. I hate cutting off my points. So, I wasn't paying attention. And now I'm going to have to re-sew this one. Told you, I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Everybody has bad days and good days and easy parts and not so easy parts. And if you don't pay attention, Jack the Ripper becomes your friend. And I don't like Jack the Ripper. He's a pain. So I try to get away from using him wherever possible. If something's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong on video. Just because that's the nature of it. And come on, you want to come off? You know you do. Okay. So, now to make sure that doesn't happen again, I am going to stitch this one with this facing me instead of the other way around. 
so that I can see. Hold on, let me iron this. All right, so that I can see where this seam line and this seam line come together and not cross on this side of that line. That way I won't lose my points. I went a little crazy before. And as a result, I cut my points off. There we go. That's better. Much better. I don't know about you guys, but here in Florida, I know it's probably much colder other places, but it was cold to do it. Like a wind chill of in the 30s, which if I was up north, I'd probably be used to it. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. But since I've been in Florida, that's no brain at all. I'm getting, my blood is thinning out. So what used to not bother me is starting to bother me a whole heck of a lot. And I don't like I don't like being cold. All right. So we just sewed this one and this one. Now we're gonna sew them together. And then we'll sew to this. So this whole square to here, and finally take care of this part. Easy peasy. All right. Now, just applying this. <laughs> we go. All right, this is the one we sew. We're going to sew this one together, and then I'm going to sew this one. And then we can finally get this one done. Okay, so we're going to have to iron this seam this way. Sorry, seeing a close-up of my head. <laughs> okay, so we want to line that one up and that one. You'll see this. It's hard to show you on the camera, but you, you'll understand it when you get to that point um, where I'm lining these seams up. And I can show you once I'm done sewing it. Uh-oh. Nola has heard something. Hopefully you can't hear her. You can hear her barking in the background. Oh, again. Okay. <laughs> 
Ah, I should not cut my thread. Oh, well. All right. There you go. Not bad. I can say so myself. So, hopefully you can see it. I lined up this one, this seam, and this seam. So that, to me, it just makes my, my eye travel a little bit easier. All right. Almost done. Almost. And then I can get working on something else. I can't wait to start on the barn star sampler. I love, I love stars. Nice thing about that quilt is, you know, check out the Facebook page. I know it's on there somewhere, but, um, maybe from last week or so, is it's got all different size blo um, star blocks and different star blocks. So you're not doing the same thing over and over, which I love. I love samplers. I get bored too easy. You know, if you have to do all one thing, one type of block um, to an entire quilt, that would probably be too boring for me. So samplers are right up my alley. When you can work on different types of blocks in one quilt, I love that. All right. <clears throat> here we go. We just finished this part. So I'm going to sew this one to here and then sew this to this. Almost done. Almost. I know this was a little bit longer than you probably expected, but we needed to get caught up after the holidays and my illness. That's the first time I've closed my shop because I was sick in 10 years, at least. If I close my shop, it's not, it's usually... I mean, I've had to close a lot for close pearls a lot this last year due to my dad passing and my husband being in and out of the hospital the last six months. But for me to close because I'm sick, that's the first time in many, many years just because I don't. I work no matter what. So it's something new for me, and it really put me, between that and the holidays, it put me behind big time. Wouldn't be bad if, um, if I was playing hooky and sewing at the same, you know, while I'm sitting here home, <laughs> sick, but no, I was very, very sick. There was no hooky for me. Unfortunately. I wish I play hooky. But I know everybody, it's been going around bad. The crud, everybody's getting sick. There's a lot more 
seems here to line up. And again, don't freak out if you don't get them lined up. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. It's something for you to strive towards and to get better at with each new quilt. Yeah, I I know so many people that have gotten sick over the last three weeks to a month or since since um Thanksgiving. Including my daughter, son in law, and granddaughter. Everybody got sick there. Not not fun. Especially when this is literally the first time I've gotten a cold in like five years. I forgot how yucky it can be. Yes, that's a technical term. You know, before everything else, getting a cold, yes, it was yucky. But I was used to it. But not having had a cold in five years, all of a sudden, it hit me pretty bad. It was not fun. And I'm still dealing with it. It's been over two weeks now. It's just about done. Just the ear infection isn't completely done yet, even though I'm done with the antibiotics. Let's see. Not bad if I do say so myself. There you go. So we finished this part. And... We finished part four or section four and section three. Now, I don't quite sure which way it goes, honestly. Let's see. No. Okay, so that's that. Oh, I have to have the right, the right side. Yes. Yeah, so when we start putting these pieces together, it's going to be, everybody's going to keep saying, it doesn't work. It doesn't go together. Well, you got to remember, you got a left and a right. So you're going to get confused. I guarantee you it's going to happen. So this one. Let's see. Okay, see, I told you, you're going to get confused. I know you, because uh, I'm going to get confused. Uh, I'm already confused. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I just did this the other day. Let's see. There is that one. Okay, I think we've got a few more in between. I don't think we're where we need to be yet. That's why it won't go together, because I have a few more other sections. Three and four doesn't necessarily go together in exactly the right space. Together, together, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right. I'm done for today, or at least on this one. I got to do jubilation and get that ready for next week's in-store class. Almost done with that. And then I'll post it on Facebook. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them. You know where I am if you need me. Have a great weekend, everybody.